Spy planes are a lot bigger and noisier today than they've ever been, and sometimes a little uglier too. The sleek and stealthy SR-71 and its ultra-high resolution camera has become obsolete. Cold War spy planes like the Blackbird and the U-2 have been replaced by aircraft like the big and slow Boeing 707 that blasts loud and powerful radar waves in all directions to gain intel on enemy movements. The Airborne Early Warning and Command Force, or AWACS for short, are the spy planes of the 21st century. NATO operates more AWACS planes than non-NATO states have stealth aircraft. The thing is, just one of these new airplanes can stay in the sky for over 11 hours on a single tank and can watch over an area of more than 120,000 square miles, or the whole of Poland. Three of them can provide unbroken radar coverage of all Central Europe, or around 450,000 square miles. But why these modern spy planes cannot be shot down, even though they can be easily detected? How this Ito Hawkeye narrowly avoided a fatal crash after an arresting cable snapped. Why AWACS platforms come in so many different shapes and sizes, from helicopters to airplanes with a giant nose or a flying saucer. And why with all their benefits, NATO already wants to abandon these extremely powerful eyes in the skies is not what you think. NATO's Airborne Early Warning and Command Force has many components. Its largest and most iconic is the E-3 Sentry, also called the AWACS. First built in the 1970s from converted Boeing 707s, the E-3 Sentry can fly at Mach 0.8, or 614 miles per hour, and reach an altitude of 35,000 feet. NATO has over 40 of these airplanes in service. The E-3 is easily recognizable by its rotodome, the 30-foot diameter rotating radar on its back. This is an extremely powerful pulse Doppler radar that can keep track of over 600 moving and stationary targets from a distance of over 250 miles. Russians also have their own version, called the A-50 Mainstay. But judging by the state of the Russian military, your guess is as good as mine as to whether or not it even works especially since reports surfaced on January 14, 2024, of a Ukrainian Patriot missile shooting down a Russian A-50 over the Azov Sea. That said, Russia claimed to have shot it down themselves, by accident. There are other large AVAX planes in use around the world, which feature more advanced but more expensive radar technology. The Australian and British use the E-7 Wedgetail, while the Chilean and Israeli Air Force use aircraft like the Boeing Falcon. The Royal Navy uses Crow's Nest AEW helicopters as part of their early warning and command force. However, their use is very limited around the world. Their speed, size and fuel capacity means that these machines can only operate for around 3 to 5 hours and at less than half the altitude of their fixed-wing counterparts. Also, their sensors have less power and range, and it can only fit one crewman responsible for its operation, compared to the 13 personnel that operate and coordinate within an E-3 sentry. Compared to the mechanical rotation seen on the E-3 sentry, these more advanced airplanes and helicopters use a mix of active and passive phased array radars, which instead use electronics. A radar this big is about as stealthy as a bullhorn in an office meeting. So why use such aircraft as modern surveillance machines? Radar works by line of sight, which is why radar domes are often found on top of tall structures or on very high ground. This is also why a Navy ship's radar is always at its highest point. By placing a powerful radar on an airplane at 30,000 feet, you can increase line of sight for thousands of miles and see low-flying threats over natural obstacles like mountain ranges. These platforms also allow for very mobile and adaptable radar capabilities. NATO can deploy an AWACS in a matter of hours to a conflict zone or to an area that needs surveillance. The E-2 Hawkeye is the most mobile of these platforms. It's part of the U.S. military's Carrier Airborne Early Warning System, a network of platforms designed to protect the Navy's most vital assets, aircraft carriers. 
These airplanes feature a collapsible wing design for storage in the hangar bay. But why do they still use propeller engines? The E-2 Hawkeye is specifically designed for maritime support missions. Unlike its bigger sisters like the E-3 Sentry or the E-7 Wedgetail, the E-2's job is to escort slow-moving ships through hostile waters, flying at lower altitudes and lower speeds than other AWACS airplanes. The E-2's twin propeller engines allow for slower stall speeds than turbofan engines and make it more fuel efficient for longer missions. And this key design choice also saved the lives of four crewmen. On March 18, 2016, an E-2 Hawkeye was completing a routine landing on the deck of aircraft carrier USS Eisenhower, when the arresting cable snapped at the last second, sending the aircraft and its crew barreling down into the ocean. Fortunately, the twin propeller's low stall speed allowed the crew to pitch up the airplane and narrowly avoid disaster. AWACs are easily detectable on enemy sensors because of their size, shape, and their loud radars. So how does NATO defend its airborne early warning and command force from missile threats and enemy fighter jets? You might think shooting down a converted civilian airliner that carries a huge radar and flies a predictable racetrack pattern is pretty easy. The challenge is, a fighter jet would never get within range to shoot it down. AWACS airplanes are considered high-value, heavy airborne assets, or in layman terms, they need to be protected at all costs. When flying close to enemy territory, AWACS planes will always be escorted by friendly fighter jets. In wartime, AWACS will operate and communicate with hundreds of other vehicles and centers of command, like infantry groups, ships, and fighter jets. Some of those jets will be looking for enemy stealth airplanes or even the airbase that they operate from. And an airplane that cannot take off is no different than an airplane that has been shot down. But how are they defended against missile threats? Unlike fighters, modern AWACS planes are very unmaneuverable and probably could not dodge a large and fast-moving missile. However, missiles are pretty useless without radar locking. And the second an enemy vehicle tries to lock a missile onto an AWACS, both them and their missile will be jammed to oblivion. This is because AWACS have electronic countermeasure systems over five times more powerful than electronic warfare jets like the EA-18 Growler. Not to mention that the enemy would light up on the AWACS radar like a Christmas tree, giving fighter escorts or a nearby SAM turret more than enough time to retaliate. But even if a long-range missile managed to get past these defenses, AWACS platforms are not sitting ducks. They're equipped with several pounds of chaff and flares, enough to throw off missiles. NATO is also taking a page out of FedEx's book of missile defense. It's modernizing its fleet of E-3s to feature state-of-the-art large aircraft infrared countermeasure systems, also known as lasers. But even with these upgrades, NATO's fleet of E-3s are scheduled to be decommissioned by 2035. The future of warfare is expected to replace these large hubs by a system of systems. The new F-35's next-generation sensors and AI-powered systems are the first step toward this future. Integrating that technology into unmanned drones, like the Navy's X-47B, is the next step.